So beautiful. Just like your mother's. Hi, Sinflix Recapped here. Today I'm going to recap a full plotline of a movie called The Other Lamb. Spoilers ahead, you have been warned. The movie starts with a woman dressed in a white gown calmly sinks into the dark and still water. In a private community, Salah and her sister, Tamar, watch the waterfalls when Salah surprises Tamar. The girls leave while laughing and make their way home through mountain terrain to a cluster of wooden cabins. There, the other women called as the sisters and wives are doing chores and singing peacefully. They all worship the group's lone male leader, the shepherd. During dinner, the daughters, wearing blue dresses, are seated on one side of the table, and the wives, wearing red, are seated in front of the daughters. When the shepherd finishes his dinner, he chooses one of the wives to receive his grace. The daughters sleep together and separately from their mothers and pray to the shepherd as their god. The shepherd oversees his lessons among the women the next morning. He reminds them of their fate as his wife and how he made the ultimate sacrifice for them by giving them with all they required. All of them, now dressed in white, are admiring him as he speaks, but Salah appears to be drawn by her own thoughts. As the women continue to worship him, the shepherd dips his fingers into the goat's blood and marks their faces. A short time later Salah and Tamar are left alone in the woods. Salah notices the shepherd from the distance and requested Tamar to go to the cavern leaving her alone with the shepherd. As Shepherd and Salah walk along, the Shepherd remarks on Salah's failure to pay attention to his sermon. Salah gets defensive as a result. She then smiles as she realizes he's just teasing her. As he curls his fingers into her flowing hair, the Shepherd acknowledges her attractiveness. Salah then requests him to tell her a tale about her mother, but he refuses. Instead, he leans in for a kiss, then pulls back. Before leaving, he urges her to let the wives re-braid her hair. Salah enjoys their time together when they are alone, believing that she would soon be his wife. While Salah and Tabitha, one of her sisters, are performing their duties, one of the women, Eloise, is delightfully sharing her encounter with the shepherd the night before. Salah is envious of Eloise, who has only lately joined the group and is almost her age, but is already wife. Tabitha warns her about speaking ill of the wives, which leads to a confrontation between them. Tabitha's mother enters and settles the dispute by instructing Salah to take the leftovers to the hut where the impure and sinful women live. Inside the hut lies an unconscious young woman, fasting because she is impure due to her period. Sarah, another woman, emerges from the shadows, showing her scar-covered body. Sarah is taken aback by the small amount of leftovers. Salah, on the other hand, reminds her to eat so Sarah can regain her purity. Salah is convinced that the women who were sent into the hut, away from them, must repent and be punished, just like her fellow unconscious sister, who is suffering from menstrual cramps. According to the shepherd, what they're going through, is a penalty for Eve's sin. But Sarah advises Salah that when her time comes, she must be prepared since she will no longer be special to him. Sarah's remarks regarding Salah and her mother have clearly upset her. Outside Salah expresses her irritation by kicking stones. Later that night Adriel, the pregnant wife, puts her daughter, Lily, to bed in the daughter's room. Lily insists on hearing a story, but Adriel reminds her that only the shepherd can tell them stories. As she watches the shepherd from the window while everyone else is sleeping, Salah appears to develop an obsessive fascination with him. The shepherd is staring at Salah through the window of his cottage when suddenly Eloise appears. While the shepherd pushes his fingers into Eloise's mouth, the two intently stare at Salah. The next day, while some wives bathe the shepherd, the older wives bathe their daughters. Salah is tasked by the shepherd with assisting a sheep in giving birth, despite the guidance she receives on how to perform it. Salah is still overwhelmed by the assignment. Salah falls asleep while waiting for the pregnant sheep to give birth. She finds the dying sheep with its newborn lamb as she wakes up. Her thoughts are interrupted, when she realizes she's finally getting her period. Salah sneaks in one of the cabins later that night to see whether the blood is still there. She wipes herself with wool and yells in frustration when she sees blood. Salah informs Tamar that a wild dog has gotten into their cottage got one of the lambs. In her head, though, she sees herself stabbing the lamb. When the wives learn that their sheep has died, they take her to church. She is forgiven by the shepherd. Despite this, Salah regret for what happened, feeling herself to be impure. One night, Salah overhears a police officer warning the shepherd that they must leave the woods or he will be arrested while everyone is sleeping. The shepherd informs them the next day that they must all travel in quest of another Eden. 
He then collapses on the ground, and the women rush to his rescue. Salah remains puzzled in her position. The shepherd then grins and smiles with the women who are carrying him on their shoulders. Everyone is excited for their move to a new home, but Salah is puzzled. When the shepherd rubs her neck, a gesture he makes when he is interested in someone, her thoughts become even darker. Shepard later discovers Salah alone in the woods. Salah is upset about having to leave their house, but the shepherd encourages her to be brave for her younger sisters. The women perform a chant as though saying goodbye to the countryside before leaving home. The group walks with their cloths on their backs and their flock of sheep in tow. They walk by foot, stopping to rest and eat every now and then. Silah asks the shepherd why they can't just live in one of the abandoned houses they come across along the route, but the shepherd explains that the location was made by damaged people. They take another break and behind the bonfire in front of Salah is a tent where the shepherd advance himself on Eloise. Salah returns to the abandoned house that night and glances at a landscape painting inside. When she turns around, she is astonished to see Eloise smirking at her. Her smile vanishes, though, when she displays her wounded neck. Tabitha screams the next day since Salah can no longer hide the bloodstains. Tabitha refers to her as unclean. With that, Salah joins Sarah, whom she had previously discriminated against, in the back of the line. Meanwhile, the strong wind holds them back, and they take a break in a shady spot. The shepherd, who is holding two girls in his arms, draws melancholy glances from the wives. They recall a time when they had complete access to Shepherd's grace. The younger wife swiftly responds that he's no longer interested in them because they're old, prompting a harsh slap to the younger woman. Salah uses the chance to question Sarah about her mother at the same time. Sarah confesses that her mother died from an infection, not childbirth, and that the Shepherd refused to seek medical help, resulting in her death. She and Selah's mother both joined the cult and competed for Shepherd's attention, but Selah's mother died soon after. During the difficult journey, Salah begins to doubt Shepard's judgment. When she sees a car driving down the road, she imagines herself inside, dressed as an ordinary teenager. Salah imagines herself riding in the back seat with Sarah and her mother. Strange visions appear to her as manifestations of her thoughts. That night, Salah begins to enjoy being with Sarah since she is able to express her feelings toward the Shepard. Salah has her doubts about him as well, but she has been taught to obey. Sarah tells her a previous experience. She used to slip out in the middle of the night and stand naked next to the waterfall, which gave her a sense of freedom. Sarah explains to Salah that she didn't just leave since she doesn't know what's out there anymore and has nowhere to go. After seeing Salah and Sarah's closeness, the shepherd takes advantage of Sarah's weakness of love for him and spends the evening with her while everyone else sleeps. Salah is allowed to walk with the others again the next day. The shepherd expresses regret for leaving her with Sarah, whom he considers to be broken. Due to the long hike, Adriel has contractions during this time. As they listen to Adriel's agonizing moans, the daughters grasp each other in terror. Despite the wives' efforts to assist her during her labor, she dies in childbirth. During the funeral, the shepherd separates Lily from her mother, who has passed away. Sarah holds the shepherd responsible for her death and refers to him by his given name, Michael. The shepherd conducts the burial in a cold manner, burning her body while the others sing a farewell song for her. Enraged, Salah sees another vision of herself, this time in front of Adriel's burning body. The next day, Salah sees Sarah isn't accompanying them. Sarah tells Salah that she is taking the baby with her. The shepherd had advised them to leave the kid behind because it had been born wrongly. The baby is a boy, and the shepherd wanted to leave him since a flock can only have one ram. Before leaving with the baby, Sarah encourages Salah to stay strong and assists her sisters. Tamar becomes irritated as they go further and asks Shepard if they've arrived at their destination. The Shepard doesn't respond, but Tamar senses they're traveling in the wrong path, causing the Shepard to become enraged and strike Tamar. After beating her in the head many times he drags her and orders Tamar to lead them instead. The women are unable to stop it since they are also frightened of being hit. As the Shepard denounces Tamar, Salah watches the situation with an angry glare. After a while the shepherd declares a meadow with a gorgeous lake to be their new Eden. The sisters' faith has been damaged by the journey, but the shepherd baptizes them all, which looks to be an act of cleansing and control over them. The first young woman expresses her dissatisfaction with the situation, but when Selah's turn comes, he keeps her underwater longer than the others. 
Sila imagines herself drowning in crimson water while clad in flowing white clothing with the other women while underwater. Before the shepherd lifts her up again, she is reminded of all her rage. The shepherd summons Sila to his tent that evening, but Tamar tells her not to go. They've all grown to despise the shepherd for abandoning his pregnant wife, but Sila keeps going because she knows she has to follow. The shepherd orders her to unbraid herself inside the tent and compliments her beauty for resembling her mother. He grabs her and puts two fingers in her mouth, preventing her from screaming. Salah stands motionless until he's finished, peering up and trying to figure out what she's doing here. As her rage grows, her unusual visions begin to appear once more. She fantasizes about the sisters murdering the shepherd and slaughtering him into pieces. That night, Salah disobeys his rules by reciting a narrative she learned from Sarah, as if to awaken their minds to the fact that they are deserving of so much more. Salah tells them about a naked woman standing in front of the waterfalls which shows her where to go and be free. The daughters wake up the next day to find that the wives have vanished. When they get at the lake, they discover the shepherd kneeling in the garments of the women. The shepherd concocts a story about their being carried away by the river and how they will now live forever. While the children lament the loss of their mothers, the shepherd instructs the daughters to take on the role of wives. Salah is the first person he asks to marry him, and he promises her all of his grace. Salah, however, is enraged and refuses to accept his grace, claiming that he is not their shepherd. The shepherd is stunned when his favorite daughter rejects him, so he slaps Salah. Salah strikes back harder as she imagines what the shepherd has done to the wives. The cops eventually arrive at the site where the old wives' bodies had washed away. They continue down the path and come upon paintings of shepherds as well as signs that humans formerly lived there. Then they encounter the shepherd as, who is hung from a tree and appears to be dead. His head is adorned with ram's horns, signifying that he is a demon dressed as shepherd. The daughters, on the other hand, are standing in front of a waterfall, as in Sarah's story. Salah, who stands in front of them, is clutching a bleeding lamb. And the movie is over. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe button. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.